Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. We are going to do Eve Havoc stuff after, after we check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Down the Rabbit Hole, an Eve documentary that I actually started watching, okay? We're gonna watch this together. We're gonna react to it together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Down the Rabbit Hole. And I'm going to make sure this isn't super loud for y'all. Let's turn this down a little. Okay. Here we go, chat. Yeah, no local means we're watching this right now, so. I haven't seen enough of this chat, let's see. For over 20 years, the simulated world of New Eden has run in near perpetuity. Jeez, While information about this world is readily available, much of it is indecipherable to the outside observer, replete with jargon and references meaningful only to those who have spent years in the community. I don't wanna be mean, is this an AI voice? Is this an, an AI transcribe? Because the guy sounds like he is talking like this. If I talk like this the whole stream, you will think that I am Loru. You know, I don't want to be mean. I, is he? If he's not, and I'm sorry if you ever watch this. I'm sorry, my guy. But on occasion, you know, mainstream news outlets will write articles about the results of battles involving right, honey, thousands exactly. of players and virtual assets valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars. Unironically, a great shot, by the way. And here, I'm gonna move my face over. And y'all, I, I see you saying, hey, the game's back, the game's not back. We're just gonna wait a little bit. We're just, we're not gonna go back into the game right now because even if the game's back, I guarantee you they're gonna have some problems. Ah! So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this video. I'm gonna be over here just cause I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna channel Asmund for God's sake. Just be right here, chat. And let's put a, let's put y'all down here. Okay, and then we're just the gonna watch this for a while. Okay? In wars fought watch for this for arcane you know, reasons. You're totally right, Thomas. Belligerence with convoluted backgrounds. People who spend their time in New Eden will begin to discuss their experiences in the game and their participation in historic events, but their gravity is often difficult to fathom for okay. those with- I'm, Again, I'm not trying to be mean. My guy, we are gonna put you to 1.25. Do not, I don't wanna hear anything about this chat. I, uh, my ADD brain cannot focus on what's happening. This is incredible. Already, six, our video. I am I am intrigued. I need this to go faster. Thank you very much. Without okay. the same so, knowledge you know. or experience. Others Sheesh. endeavor to chronicle particular Did aspects of its history, server, such as harrowing acts of subterfuge and its ever-shifting borders and alliances. Many who hear about this world agree that, while fascinating, they would never attempt to join it themselves, citing its complexity and depth. And so, mm. for most, a single question remains. What is EVE Online? What is EVE Online? Yo, all, that was a really cool intro, actually. And the, he mentioned subterfuge. That might be one of the most unique things about Eve is the subterfuge, you know? So the short answer, Dubquake, what happened to your friend as he lost a ship? That's the short answer, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, Ben, we're definitely gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to check this out on my own time, not just like right here, right? You know, so, you know, corporate espionage and real world politics is explained amazingly. Ooh, mm. I'm in for that, y'all, so. A Titan. Is the Avatar the most recognizable Eve Titan? Do y'all think that? I think it might be. It's pretty iconic with its like forward facing laser, you know? What the hell is this? <laughs> this? During the early 1990s, software developers were exploring the possibilities of the- I thought there was like, there was a hundred percent, in my mind, there was a 50% chance that they were gonna be like this is the first computer to run EVE Online. <laughs> like internet, a relatively new invention at the time. Interactive online spaces- such Please skip this part, section one. Oh my God, is this like the technical side of things? I'll As listen to a little bit, a little bit. And little forums bit. So, were shared you know. by millions of people. Badger Badger is right. To everyone you know, so. using and the Doom Shroom. These spaces, the Doom Shroom, what a good line for that, that's potential. so funny. Yeah. Internet technology was rapidly improving and changing, and developers had to make certain that their creations could keep pace. Even more difficult, however, was balancing the <laughs> ever-changing needs and desires <laughs> of users with the services being created. <laughs> right, As personal oh computers became more widespread and their rendering capabilities increased, developers grew- I might skip this part, actually, because it's like, as personal computers became more widespread, people desired to play games with spreadsheets. And uh, listen, I'm, I'm trying not to make fun of this guy. He's really going in depth here. We're just gonna do one of these, okay? Just, just- just, Year of okay. reporting. All right. Just section two. 
Okay, holy crap, chat. Maybe I should have... Despite Eve's unwelcoming Section nature, two. the promise of such a cinematic multiplayer experience was enticing <sighs> to a wide breadth of players and drew a significant audience long before it had been awesome. released. Starting on October 24, 2002, a blurb appended to news releases would proclaim that the game would, quote, allow up to 100,000 gamers to compete simultaneously across a full 3D galaxy of five... Now, I don't think 100,000 gamers, it's a bold claim. It's also the marketing number. See, this is what's interesting, is that could Eve run 100,000 players? Well, as of today, I don't think so, bro. <laughs> what, do we hit 40K and the servers collapsed? You know, it's like, could Eve ever get to this point? I honestly, I could tell right now, I really think that Eve could get to 100,000 players. I really think it could. It averages, right, we, we tested 42K today and it didn't work, but they're used to like 20 to 30. You know, they're, they're like used to this much, right? Could it hit 100K? I think the easy answer is yes. And I can tell you, I see it. I see myself responsible for that. What I mean is the devs are already making a really awesome, really the last true sandbox. Mm, and I see it up to the- fried eggs. Little man. I see it up to the content creators to like figure out how to make cool stuff happen for the forward I've get the good stuff. solar so. systems. Mm -hmm. Currently, Eve Online is in phase three of beta testing, with thousands of gamers oh playtesting the game daily, the trading in more than 300 beta. fan and player corporation sites. To date, there God, are more than 80,000 gamers signed Huge. up for the beta test, and Two at least 50,000 are estimated to participate before the game is launched. 80 Just like in the real the world, money will be the commodity of choice. Players can earn cash by accepting work from non-player characters who will reward gamers with cash which can be traded for goods or other items. Also, gamers can earn money <laughs> by working for a <laughs> Craig, corporation. These corporations are comprised of- Is this how normies? Is this how normies think games go? How do you make money? Well, it's what's the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing? Have you ever seen the like, the like, Key and Peele skit? Well, in game, just like in the real world, you're gonna be able to earn a currency called money. You can get this by interacting with non-playable characters or NPCs. Those characters will give you quests that you can, is this how it goes? Is this how the normies see us? Well, we're playing games, they're like, so what do you do? Be like, oh, we go, you know, we go like take over stuff and we get some isk and they're like, so you just play a game that gets you money? You know, and like, yeah. Like, can you just do that in real life? You're like, yeah, but I can't fly a spaceship in real, you know, come on, Jesus Louise. I just, I read this and I'm like, this is, must be how the non-gamers think of us. Or they're like, oh, they're just playing games to make money where they can, you know, do it in real life. Of gamers it feels like the servers are on beta. It does today. And are working together to dominate you know the universe. So, it does. Today, there are more than yes, the first Eve looks way established. different. Even so, though Eve Online in has not in yet been published. These corporations have elaborate web pages detailing infrastructure, location, business models, and mission Gear statements. Of amazing. While this blurb okay, emphasized Ray, good to see on YouTube. Thanks very much. online, many were more excited about the concept of Look participating at in a perpetually running economy, where the Look goods that they it. harvested or back. created would be actively used oh by other God, players. Oh my God, dude! Look at it. It's really free form. You can uh, choose from a lot of uh, possibilities. You can be a, a market uh, operator. Look you can be a transporter, at these miner. clips. You can operate a factory. You can research. You can operate a big corporation. You can uh, have uh, careers within a corporation about being. Uh, I don't even know what some of these ships are, or dude. Or being the accountant of corporation, and uh, the current games uh, sort of more focus on. You gotta, on having. You gotta minus the nose pick. You gotta applaud CCP for. I I genuinely believe that their game has been ahead of its time for a long time. You know, for for many years. Like how World of Warcraft was in was a called a pillar of the MMO community. I think one, it might be Helmar. Look at him. I think that's Helmar. It, Eve has been one of those games that one of the reasons it's stuck around so long where other games have fallen off, Eve has been consistent where they've had periods of downturn like ev like any game, but they've been consistently chilling. And I think it's because the core of the game, dogmatically speaking, is good. It really does what young Helmar here says you can do. People going up against monsters, maybe in small groups. Monsters, Chan, remember. Uh, monsters. Sort of focuses on you know, building so. our society uh, and supplying the tools and the rules. Mm, definitely, Ben. I'm going to love first, some of the old game mechanics and how they that the responded. game would be launched in March of 2003. But again, the studio needed a delay. In a press release, the art director Rainier Harderson stated that, quote, 
we have always stood firm on the commitment to release EVE only when we felt it was time. Although the game is nearly finished, we felt it would be best to hold off an additional so six Eve's weeks. Got this delayed. will allow us to fully optimize the mm. performance of our new server cluster, implement Maybe features we have promised, and continue testing to assure the elimination of yes. bugs that would interfere with the player's ability to enjoy the EVE experience to its fullest potential. Okay, and all right. These delays likely look, make I can already the prospective get some players picture nervous. Going. I can respect that because, yo, freelancer is something people bring up a lot. I actually had a couple comments on my recent videos about Faction Warfare. They brought up the game Freelancer specifically. This is an older game that really did the Faction Warfare stuff that EVE is doing. When EVE started putting Faction Warfare into the game, They people were saying a lot like, oh, you just copy Freelancer. There's no new ideas, y'all. Like, I'd rather, one of the reasons why Blizzard has been historically, not recently in the past couple years, but historically a good company, used to call it the Blizzard Sheen, where they would take a system that's good and make it just a little shinier, a little bit better, and they would patent it, box it, put it in, and just keep on going. And that worked for a long time. Eve did the same thing, similar things, with the Freelancer system, where they took elements from Freelancer and made it work inside of their game. Now, do I think that means they stole something? Absolutely not. There's literally no new ideas. Unless they actually copied code, nobody stole anything. I think they did it better. You know. Space games at the time so, had a notorious history of ever extending delays and under delivering okay. on promised you know. features. So, However, the iterative nature now? of MMOs such as EVE meant that any missing features could be added later, and because many players were able to test the game early, we'll soon, they could we'll see, see how many features were being tested and what would likely be available. Oh my god, look as at that. Promised, is that the, the team yo, is that CC the Raven? Is that the Raven or the Golem? Or like that hull? Is that that ship? Look at it. Look at the polygons on this sucker. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. What's up there, Xavier? How are we doing? Yeah, exactly, Needler. We're not signing into EVE right now because stuff's freaking broken. So this is the Raven. This is nuts. Oh my gosh. BP were right, able exactly, to meet the exactly, release goal and had sent the client to be printed by their partners for physical. And look, look at, look at this. Look at, this is your cap down here. Look at that. There was no Marauders client in the game. Oh, that's right. by their partners for physical oh, release God, in late dude. April. And finally, on May 6th, oh my God, 2003, look at players that. were able to play the final release of the game, which Yo. featured a total of 5,000 to- Look at this cover art. I remember this. Ugh. Do you remember getting games and coming home with the physical copy and mommy's driving you home and you're reading the stuff and mom's like, so you're excited about the game? And I'm like, uh-huh. Cause I'm just like, I'm just re this, that was the best of times. And if I ever own a game studio, I want to do this again. I want to have physical copies that have like lore and art and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to do this again. Exactly. Eve equals everyone versus everyone. Yes. Is that what it means, Xavier? No way. That's what Eve means. That, that would be really awesome. You know? So that's what I did when renting Tomb Raider 2. Yes. When games became like five CDs, that was getting too much. Yeah, that was, I totally agree. When I had a Final Fantasy X, one of my favorite games of all time, by the way, and it was like literally 10 discs. And it's like, insert disc four. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like just, those were the good old days. Hey, the good old days were good. Let's make the new days greater. You know what I'm saying? So, 201 so. star systems. But those who had participated comment, right? in the alpha and beta uh, the were not was in the game back in the day. Their sure. months spent testing the game had given them significantly oh more knowledge God, and experience the than those entering New Eden for the first time. Oh my time. God. Yo, no, no, no. Look what that Megathron was running. To decide how their look first hour the game had given. That's warp scram, warp disrupt. Looks like an afterburner. And then I don't know if the bottom is guns. So this Megatron is is double tackle spec Megatron, bro. Them That's significantly incredible. more knowledge and oh experience than those entering new That's Eden incredible. for the Dude. first Ugh. time. And they well, have spent you, months it's strategizing with one another it. to decide mm. how their first hours. Yo, look at this. ECM cat battery after triple ECM burst. And I don't know what the ship days is. Days and weeks would be utilized wow. in order to make look the at most local. money and establish their presence Look at solidly. local. Oh my As a God. cheeky That's nod the to their scanner. home country, the abbreviation for Icelandic kroner and the game's currency, Interstellar Credits, Bro, the was apocalypse. the same. Isk. Many of the most Isk. organized groups scattered away from one another and prepared to lay claim to their own territory. However, they could not simply do so anywhere. Wow. EVE's star systems are connected in a web-like pattern with stargates, which may be used to traverse from one star to the next. 
In the center of this vast web is Empire Space, an area controlled by the non-player empires where people may fly their ships in relative safety. The safety afforded to players is determined by the star- The map was actually one of the reasons that people Hero got into reporting. EVE back in the day, because of how big the game was. I remember when people showed me, Peter, what's up? Well, good to see you over on YouTube, and also Xavier, thank you for being here on Twitch. Yes, we are on Twitch, you know, all the, all the good things, right? This, one of the best things about EVE is how big the map is, because other games, like, you can go from the edge of War of the Warcraft in Classic to the other edge in a couple hours. But it wasn't just the scope of the map, it was that it was it had stuff where you have to deal with players yeah, and mobs, and it wasn't just like you could just walk in a direction, there was nothing. Not like Starfield where there's literally nothing there. What's up, Wabba? Jaegerman Jensen. That's, is that a Spongebob meme? That's incredible. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Any primers? Any primers? Star's security level, given incredible. a rating anywhere between incredible. 0 and 1, divided into three basic categories. High security, low security, and null security. Mm -hmm. Or, as they are typically called, high sec, low sec, and null sec. In high security space, the Empire Police Forces, named Concord, would intervene in any aggression between players, affording some level of safety in these areas. In contrast, aggression would not summon protection in low security space, but the offending players would be granted a suspect status that would make them a target both for players and Empire forces. Mm -hmm. However, for the groups looking to establish their own presence in- That, that one system is the entirety of EVE Online. Nothing affects the market more. Nothing affects how players play, what ships are flied, where and when and how n you do things. Nothing affects the game more than the suspect system. Nothing. Than the criminal suspect system. Absolutely nothing. It dictates how expensive you want your fits to be, how likely you are to get ganked. It dictates literally everything. That was one of the reasons why Wormhole Space was so big, because it was a new iteration on that system with one change no names and local that one this is how a game one of the reasons i love eve is because it's so deep you can change a small thing one thing and the entire how you play changes null sec and low sec you can see when someone comes into local and then you can act accordingly in wormhole space you have nothing except your d scan and your probe scanner and the removal of the local chat picture means that now you have to be on your toes at all times because somebody could be invisible. If you're in, in null sec or low and someone comes in cloaked, you'll still see their name. So this, the whole, th I, I love games like Eve, one of the reasons I'm, and I'm an Eve creator is because I want this game to, to succeed because it's so, it's so deep yet enjoyable the farther you go down. You know what I'm saying? That's space, the most tantalizing area so, was Nikolai, I'm, I'm jealous surrounding too. empire space. Golf, in a you're large living in Wormhole now. I would, I would love when I go full time in Jesus' name. I would love to live inside of Wormhole. Absolutely love it. You know, so. <laughs> Bozzy, this is how I do. You know what I'm saying? That's literally my job. You know, thank you very much. Reporting. So, exactly. Here, there were no laws, no rules, and no protections other than whatever the players could enforce. Uh, I don't think so, Grinding. Were eager to I think you continue forward. In this new and vast Yo, frontier, is that the rattle? The or the, uh, resources. But what's a Tech 1 rattlesnake? What's a Tech 1 rattlesnake? The Widow's the Black Ops ship. What's a Tech 1 rattle? Scorpion? Scorpion. Oh, thank you, Bozzy. Thank you. He's a scorpion. Okay, no, the Raven is the... The rave is a mission of the scorpion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. It's but good, holding good. on to these good. regions would Ooh, require IRL work server. and coordination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so the corporations mm. that had organized before the release of the game began to establish Look themselves at this UI, in particular scorpion. regions yeah, yeah, of scorpion. space Th thank you, that thank they thank found enticing. The factors involved in these choices varied from There's proximity to Empire space to what resources were available. First, though, the corporations would require ships, and to buy and equip these ships, Yo, bro's they would getting need nuded. resources Look at this. and <laughs> money. While the EVE developers wanted to That's provide incredible. a world where the oh trade God. of goods was managed almost entirely by players, they realized that in the early stages of the game, no player economy would be established yet. And mm. so, they allowed non-player characters to buy and sell some of these commodities in order to stimulate the Gear player economy. Reporting. That was really smart too, because in every video game, you need something to come from somewhere because it's a video game. It's really important to understand, like, a video game should not be a hundred percent like real life like this isn't second life you know that's so weird to me if you want to like literally play something that is a hundred percent like irl like the, there has to be currency that comes from somewhere in game and the other thing that this does is it helps to having npcs that buy back things help to stabilize the market economy to 
So it's not, if, if something's 100% player driven, kind of like it is in World of Warcraft, then you get to a point where there's strange oddities that happen where items can go for obscenely expensive or obscenely cheap with no moderation therein, right? There is that you can merch stuff in WoW, just like you can sell something to a corp or sell something to an NPC inside of EVE. But if I take an item and merch it in World of Warcraft, it gets sold for pennies. Versus if I take an item and I merch it, if I sell it to an, NP an, an NPC in EVE, there's a certain basis, like sleeper loot has a base value, the blue loot from sleepers. And that prevents the sleeper loot from going below that value at the market. This in turn makes the market just a little bit stable, just enough that it's still a player economy, roughly speaking, but there's like a very soft guardrail to keep the to keep the economy in check, you know? So that's why I'm scared of Sims 5 going online. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff about that, those kind of things, Scrubber, you're right, yeah, yeah. Anyone remembers level four missions in the midst of dead space, features nuding? Oh, I don't even know, dude. Inflation and deflation, too much money or too much product? Exactly, exactly, so. This provided an early revenue here, stream you know, to sheesh. players who quickly devised a right, plan Bozzy, to make significant amounts mm -hmm. of capital during this crucial early stage. This plan was based around the daily server downtime, which occurred at a- oh, Look at this UI. Look at the market. This is for Tech One Railguns. Look at the, you can see how stuff happened. Like, look at the, here's the right hand menu, right? You can, it, the, the game has gotten so much better. Here's local. Wow. You can really, I want you to like look at this and then look at the Eve's UI and see how much better this is. It's better now than it was. I, I just applaud the devs for like doing what they had to do to like really make it feel like you're in a space world. So this does look good. You love the old market? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the look. I, I like this. I like the new market a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, you're getting the null experience and wormhole. Or excuse me, the wormhole experience and null. The chance of working. That makes me not want to play UTC. right now. I want to keep Crow waiting for stuff to get fixed. Called the yeah. Merchant Races in his seminal work on the history of New Eden, mm -hmm. named Empires of Eve. Mm -hmm. Quote. Back in the earliest days of EVE, one of the best ways to make money was by buying and selling commodities in different markets across the game. Later, EVE would place all of its emphasis on a player-controlled market, but in the early days, players could buy items and wares from characters in stations all over the game and then sell them elsewhere. What resulted was a daily series of early morning races along the most profitable trade routes. That's Merchants weird. would log in as quickly as possible after the server came back online oh God, and the daily dude. maintenance shut down. That was that the real login screen? No way, right? Fly down the trade routes no to way. the most profitable destinations. Sheesh. End quote. Trading was far from the only profession that players were looking to exploit. So right, back in the day, hauling was actually a thing. And so I was really surprised. We have a video about level four hauling missions, okay? We have a video where I go into, like, here's how to do level four missions as a truck driver in EVE. And it was met with a lot of positive feedback. Like, people liked it a lot. Uh, uh, Viator. It was my Viator one. And I was wondering why people liked this one so much. It's one of our, it's got more views than our Ocator guide. I use the Ocator way more than the Viator and the Ocator is the tankier ship, obviously. But the Viator one, because there was like a point to it. And I, I remember though, that this is how it used to be. That in order to make money in EVE, you used to have to buy something in section A and move it to section B. That's literally what's happening in No Man's Sky, by the way. That's one of the easiest ways to make isk or, <laughs> thank you, make money goals, whatever they do in No Man's Sky. Right? I haven't played in a while. So, you know, it's it's an interesting thing to say that, so the first job you could get in EVE our job was truck driver. <laughs> Factories required to build ships in Hauling EVE for a away, limited Jack, resource. You know? And so, mm. upon the release of the game, players scrambled to buy these factories as it's quickly amazing, as Nidler. possible. You're However, a truck driver in real life. It was a hauler in EVE 10 years ago. Hey, life imitates art, baby. You know, so, oh, I love No Man's Sky, Scrapper. And we might make some guys on that. It's fantastic. Due to its worldwide release, players in the UK were able to purchase the physical copies of the game wow. before anyone else. And therefore, they could buy the factories much earlier than anywhere in the oh. world. These buyers were more than just hopeful industrialists. Many of the factories have been purchased by real estate speculators, hoping to sell these factories for a higher price with no intention of constructing oh ships. According to early player Ramin Chakrazad, quote, Within days of the retail launch... All the EVE Online real estate crisis. The game had been out for like no time at all. And it's already getting headlines that no other video game could make. 
You're never going to hear, the, at least in the current iteration, the World of Warcraft real estate crisis. The Guild Wars 2 real estate crisis. Hell, even the ashes of, maybe ashes of creation can have something like this. But this is nuts. Like, within days of retail launch, all factories have been bought up and idled by spec, spec, speculators? Speculators, Jesus, I hate that word. Who were charging $300 to $400 per factory. Dollars! Dollars without any way of knowing if they really owned the factory or not. This is incredible. Like, right, there's no such thing as a, something new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun from Ecclesiastes, my favorite book in the Dagum Bible, you know. Nothing new. This is incredible, you know. So, right. That's true, there was. But I'm saying for MMOs, EVE Online, that there was a... You, you say there was a real estate crisis in UO before EVE ever came out. Yes, but EVE is the one where this kind of stuff keeps happening. It's one of the reasons the game is so great. All factories it's have so been ridiculous. bought up and idled by speculators Ugh. who are charging $300 to $400 per factory Checking without any way chain. of knowing if they really own the factory or not. Gear of and reporting. If speculators were idling the factories, mm. then that meant fewer ships, restricting players from accessing Fairly the core mechanics Welcome of in. the game. This illustrated two challenges that the developers of EVE now faced. Managing a complicated economy to keep Gear the game fun and interesting, thank you, thank you. and struggling against the black market. Real person, black market thanks economies for, being here. for MMOs like EVE are not only common, but inevitable. While yep. developers typically will include the clauses tempest? in their terms of service Yo. that stipulate against it, players are wow. usually undeterred from trading in-game assets for real-world currency, and the consequences for doing so only- We were just talking about Ultima Online. Ultima Online. Gaming would not be where it is today without Ultimate Online full stop. Full stop. Tend to involve an easily circumvented ban, which is only implemented if they're caught. And so, many of the factories intended to fabricate ships for players remained dormant upon the release of the game. But this was far from the only problem that new players faced. Those who purchased EVE Online with little foreknowledge met with a game full of promise, Sorry. yet strangely, empty. Played primarily through mm. various it menus, it was difficult mm. for new players to decipher what their next steps would be. What's up, bad bunny? Welcome the game in. world was almost preposterously massive, especially for the time. Oh, and for sure. Players were spread thinly across New Eden. But according to Hilmar Pedersen in an interview for Down the Rabbit Hole, this was in part by design. Mm -hmm. Quote, that is Helmar. about yeah. people sailing into the starry night in ships. That's sort of the inception story of Iceland, mm. Vikings escaping taxation from Norway and hoping that there's a new land somewhere. Mm. You can just imagine being on a quiet yeah. ocean in the night, looking at the night sky, sailing on a Viking ship. Eve definitely has those kinds of feelings. You can look up and see the Milky Way. And no, so that's, the they got that vibe down too. Like, t there are moments, y'all, when I'm doing level fours, or I'm like exploring something and you just stop for a sec and you like you, especially in wormhole space, you just feel like you're out there exploring, like you're out there, you know, like you're in the nothingness and you're like, you feel like you're carving Gear a piece reporting. out of what, out of a world that wasn't yours, but you can make it yours. You know, it's like that's that feeling of pseudo ownership coupled with exploration is really unique to Eve in the way they do it because other games do it but not like eve does not in the way that eve does so we just had someone sub to youtube named just your average dragon and that is incredible so you know what i'm saying that's that's amazing your ancestor vikings there it is you know, you know what i'm saying mining in the megathron i thought we unironically have a meme mining video that we're gonna make soon so sheesh awesome stuff so i think it will start the stream well just my opinion it's a great idea the everyone would the country are not far great apart idea. So. Iceland is this place that really wants to kill you. You get the very distinct feeling of that when you're a child growing up there. There's volcanoes, there's lava, is there Elmar are okay? there are freezing gale winds unpredictably any month of the year. It's a very hostile environment. Eve is like that. Sheesh. It has the toughest environment, but to some extent, the nicest people. People in Iceland are nice because we've been forced to learn how to cooperate, because the people who didn't cooperate are already frozen to the ground. <laughs> God, is kind of like that's metal as hell, dude. Oh my god, that's incredible. And that's not a joke, by the way. Eve is a difficult game. It's one of the reasons why our guys get so many videos. <laughs> because y'all are like, what the heck do I do? <laughs> so much crap going on. It's it's a great point. That it forces point. you to cooperate you know, with others. Space because Vikings, alone, right? You right. can't really achieve your full potential in Eve. It pushes you to connect with others. It really does. There are aspects of the game that almost intentionally make you feel lonely when you're alone. Mm. And that creates the foundation of the friendship machine, as we call it. This forced cooperation due to the hostileness of the environment and, later on, other players. That has created a very strong bond between people that play together in the game. 
end quote. Like that's it's a forced really, cooperation. That's re forced cooperation. And you might say like, no, that's dumb. Listen, I've been playing Eve by myself and my alts, literally me, myself, and I, for probably seven years now, something like that. And I've had a good time. And that's, I've been doing that because I don't have time to be in a corp right now or to be in a guild. I almost said guild because my wow days are coming back. I have been doing this content thing. I have a family now. I have a house now, you know, but there are moments in this game when I'm like, man, this would be better if I had a corp all the time, if I was in a corp. And when you're in a corp, that's the best part of Eve. Is it in the game? It's the people. And that's true of any MMO. Any MMO. Like, when I was playing WoW, I played WoW for so long. Not so much because we were in a top rating guild, and we were. We were the... Back in the day, we were the third to kill Illidan on Black Temple. Uh, it was We were the third on the server to, like, take him out, you know? Which, I'll take bronze. Hey, pff, I'm in all the other guilds. Heck yeah, you know, we weren't super serious either. We were just trying to do our best. That was great. But the thing that kept me going wasn't the like weapons or the titles. It was like the friends. I would sign on to talk to my friends, you know? And that's one of the reasons why I'm really glad this community is growing and like continuing to grow so positively. You know what I'm saying? Because we're, Eve is a great game and it really attracts great people as is evident by the incredible people in chat right now and those watching the VOD, you know, this, it really is awesome. So I lived in Iceland for a year while in the US Navy. Whoa, that's incredible, dude. It's an amazing place, most unique country I've ever visited. Yo, Bozzy, that's awesome. I, I'm i going to Iceland for FanFest in 2025. So go buy your uh, tickets, y'all. We'll go get a beer. You know, let's and do it. manifested so. as new players quickly gathering together for safety in this alien oh God, the game Megathron, world. Dude, I love While it. While numerous small corporations endeavored to eventually take and hold Nullsec territory, it was much easier in this early stage for players to base their operations in Empire space and venture out into Nullsec to It also valuable. attracts psychos and sociopaths. Every game does that, though, Andrew. Like, this this is every single game, you know? The, I, the idea that I can... I can be the main character of the story and that I'm the hero and that I'm going to win. I'm going to get one over on somebody. What do you think that the the people in World of Warcraft making level 19 twinks for Warsung Gulch that have five times the health and that it takes them nine months to grind out, right? You know, those people don't actually want to play WoW. They want to like, like stroke it while they're dominating some nerds that are level 13 wearing grays. You know what I'm saying? Like those kind of people don't actually want to play the game. They want to get off on putting someone in the dirt. And that's, you know, I, I made a twink for 39 and I spent some gold and I like got Crusader or whatever the heck, uh, or Fiery. I don't remember back in the day. I don't think Crusader was possible. Then. I made a really awesome looking Shaman 39 twink as much as I could. And it was so unfair. I stopped twinking. Because I, I got, I still remember this. I had the Fiery War Axe. It was either Fiery or some other enchantment, whatever, that did something. It was Fiery War Axe with some enchantment as a Shaman. So I would have a Wind Fury proc that would Wind Fury weapon attack and the Fiery War Axe's proc would hit. So I would one-tap Paladins. It was nuts. It was like, because it was like three attacks at once plus a proc or two on the War Axe. This was crazy. And I, I remember sitting back one day going like, I'm not having fun with this. I could dominate the forward base of the enemy, the like the the mill, because I was I was horde, you know, whatever. And I would dominate him so much, I'd be like, this isn't fun. I leveled the shaman up up to up to 60. Cause I was like, I just I just gotta do this instead, you know. Right. Same thing pe people smurf in League of Legends, exactly. Literally those and Phobos, if that's how you go, that's okay. It's not a bad thing because it's possible. And actually, this is this is such a good topic, y'all. Such a good topic because you see the same energy in the high sec ganking of Eve, right? You see the same energy in the in the people in safety or in the um, what's those like um, code, you know, of like, oh, I've got to get seven accounts times ten people, and we're gonna go kill a venture in high sec. You know, it's it's very it's weak. Uh, it's it's weak mentality, in my opinion. That doesn't mean I think it's morally wrong. Does that make sense? It's allowed in the game. They're using the game as a way that is black flag. He's like, yeah, yeah, those guys, right? It's not that it's bad morally. It's that I think it's an unfun experience for both sides. Like they might get off on it for a moment, but that's just your life in Eve. You're just gonna, you're gonna go kill a retriever, somebody that's like, got half a cargo hold full, full of Veldspar and go like, what'd you do last night? Oh yeah, oh yeah, this guy. This guy that has, a, he's been playing for six months.
You know, he finally afforded his first uh, mining barge. Of I took him out, killed him. He had no backup, no corp, no no friends. But uh, <laughs> I took my 10 accounts and I destroyed him. I don't understand it. You know, I don't get it. It's not how I would play EVE. Some people do. And this is true of any MMO. You get the same. It's the same energy as people that got, keep using WoW because I played WoW for decades, chat. It's the same people that hit max level, get raid gear, and then go to like the Barrens or like Silver Pine Forest and gank people, right? The max levels with raid gear ganking people leveling. It's the same experience, right? And it's just, it's an unfun experience. And people then say, well, the devs should, dis should, di should disallow it. The easy answer is there isn't a right answer. You know, there isn't a right answer there because the people then get, let's use Eve, the people like code ganking in high sec the miners, that then forces the miners to get protection in the form of friends and group up and then form corps and then form relationships. So that's part of that friendship machine. So I don't think it should be banned or blocked. I think it's something that is an unfun experience that forces people either to come together or to leave Eve. The or leave Eve part is the hard part though. And that's the thing I think it needs reined in somehow. I don't have the answer, but it is my, uh, you know, that's my thinking on it. I don't know, man, it's always fun for at least one side. I mean, I can see how it's fun for the ganker. The ganky though is like, you know, it's not, it, something's, something can be fun for one person or one side of the PVP encounter, but it doesn't mean it's good for the health of the game. That's my point, okay? That's my point. So ganking is a skill itself. It should be respected by some degree. I agree. Respect is not the word I would use, though. I would call it using game mechanics. Do I respect gankers? No. Do I acknowledge their right to do what they want to do in a video game? Yeah, <laughs> like it's fine. Again, it's it forces people to come together. Yeah, exactly. A clever use of game mechanics, right? Either the game itself is the content or you become the content. That is a really great line, actually. In fact, that might be the line for EVE Online. You know, that's it. I don't think it's bullying. No, no. See, because bullying, now we're getting into morally wrong. And I don't think it's bullying because it's in the game. You, It's something that is possible in the video game. We can have the discussion that it's not fun to be ganked and then the implications of that people leave the game, etc. But I don't think it's morally wrong to gank somebody. You know, I think if you get ganked, then you learn. And then you're like, okay, I got, how, this guy found me. How did he find me? Oh, you're not using, you know, and then your buddy's like, use a directional scanner. And you're like, what the hell is a D scan? And then you go look up one of Laura's videos. You know, this is kind of part of this, right? It's part of the game, how stuff is played, you know? So yeah, Dubquake, I don't want to go back to Eve while local's down. So th thank you for telling me actually, thank you. So, you know, that's like saying tripping someone and watching them fall is a skill worthy of respect. No, I don't think that's the same, Bozzy. I'm going to like disagree with you there actually, because you're not causing, it's because it's a, it's a video game, right? This is what makes a sandbox a sandbox, right? If you're, and I like what you're saying, everyone, it's the spirit of the, of, the, of the sandbox, yes. It's not you're walking down the street and someone trips you. It's more you're a, you're 10 years old or however old people are that play sandbox, I don't know. You're eight years old in a sandbox with another kid and the kid comes up to you and says, I want your sand and then knocks over your castle, you cry, and then you say, I want, you know, to like, I'd like to have a piece in this sandbox. So what do you do? You go get your friends and you defend your sandbox. <laughs> it's like, it's not as good of an analogy, but I don't think it's morally wrong to gank somebody. I think it's part of being in the sandbox. If you have, if you are alone in the sandbox, a group of people might come over and take your part of the sandbox. But if you're with a bunch of people, that kid might, uh, not take your part of the sandbox without being inclined not to, you know. Is that person a bully? Maybe. Does that make the act morally wrong? I don't know if I can argue that, you know, so. Give me your sand. Ganking is legit great fun. What's up, Mr. Unlucky? See, I can see how it is fun for the ganker. We were talking about, we were specifically talking about high sec ganking, which let me define this, by the way, chat. I use the word ganking a lot for really any time someone kills me because when I played WoW, that's how it was It was described. PvP, I, I'm a big time WoW player. So PvP and WoW was, PvP was Battlegrounds. But if I'm in the world and I'm mining and a, a rogue pops up behind me, I'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ganked, you know? In EVE, ganking is normally typically said, 
for like if I'm mining by myself and then a bunch of catalysts pop on top of me, that's ganking. When I talk about high sec ganking, that's what I'm referring to. If you're in wormhole space and one person warps onto you and you lose that fight, you didn't get ganked. You got killed and you got to get good. I feel bad in this game. This is a great conversation. Though. I feel bad in this game, even when doing something normal like PVP and someone begs. Well, see, this is part of the game too, is that you have to decide how you want to play the game. Part of the sandbox, you know? If somebody, there's been many times where I'm mining and there was just one time where I, ran, I was in wormhole space. And this is the best part of you. Everybody has these stories. I was in wormhole space and I found this lone retriever on an ore site and I warped him with my stuff and he targeted me with his retriever and threw out his hornets. Now I was in like, a, I was in a, I think I was in an endurance. I was in like an, in, in an, it was either a prospect fleet or an endurance fleet. It was, it was one, it was one of those. He targets me with his hornets and starts trying to muscle me out with his hornets. So I was like, in chat, I was like, my guy, can't we just share, share the rocks? He says, no. What do you think I did? I came back with my alts and murdered him. He will murder you, you know? And then I took his crap and I went from there. What would have happened if he would have been nice? You know, if he had said, yeah, man, let's just share, you know, whatever. I would not have murdered him. You know what I'm saying? Sheesh. It's absolutely crazy. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> smart. You're funny, man. I Listen, I'm just a man trying to make his way, killing it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep watching this video, Xavier, but you can link it to me and then I can check out another video later. You know what I'm saying? In Eve, you can foretell when you will be ganked if you know what you're doing. Yes, Dory. Exactly, Dory. 100%. Y'all, this is a great conversation. We're going to keep watching this video and then we're going to like, guys, I've literally been talking for 20 minutes and we're not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to watch this. Thank you. Great stuff. Totally More agree. Resources from great these conversation, protected systems so. then return with a haul and sell or utilize y'all. what they gathered. I love but the old so UI, y'all. with so many players traveling Jeez. through Nullsec, a clear method of generating profit emerged. One that played into the fantasies of many science fiction enthusiasts. Wow. Piracy. Piracy, Traveling baby. together in small bands, Ugh. pirates began roving the common lanes that miners and traders would take from Empire Space through Nullsec, seeking yep. quarries. To do so, pirates would designate one or more of their group members to act as a tackler tasked with ensnaring their target. And to do so, they would outfit their ship with specific modules. <laughs> First, it's just... <laughs> they would outfit their ship with specific modules. If you're a ganker, you have DPS, they go slow, they can't leave. Me go brr, nothing else. <laughs> That's amazing. Was the stasis webifier, oh which when applied we all to did a target, Jack. would reduce their speed, we all making did. it nearly impossible you know? to evade weapons fire. Second, yeah. and most important in a pirate's arsenal, yeah, was the warp disruptor, <sighs> which, true to its name, would hey, prevent- Hey, Legend it. Cryptor, thanks for the two months, brother. Welcome in. And escaping. <laughs> Both of these components would be placed in the mid-power mm -hmm. slots, making the tackler more vulnerable than its compatriots. And so, oh my god, orthodox for sure. While engaging a target. For sure. This, however, Yo, would thanks, often Twitch Prime be unnecessary, Thank you. as Thank traders you, and miners were frequently <laughs> unfamiliar with my combat, eyes freaking making out right them now. easy prey. To counteract this, these more peaceful Hero players reporting. would chart new routes and learn tricks to evade pirates, initiating an ever-evolving game of cat and mouse. And what did we an just say? player named Night Freeze recounted their experience. What did we just say? The ganker, so, so this is why Eve is so incredible. Primal, welcome in, it's great to see you. Kennedy, it's great to see you. And Eamon Hood, welcome in on Twitch, it's good to see you. Hey, welcome in, welcome in everybody, it's great to have you. What did we just talk about? JC Ronus, it's good to see you. Thank you very Hero much everybody. Reporting. Thanks, thanks for the follows, y'all. We were just talking about how like, so, the tri when the game was incepted, traders set up routes. They continued making their isk. Pirates said, I can, I can, you made this, I made this. And they start taking all their stuff. So then the traders start going different routes. And you best believe now they're communicating. Hey, you know, hey, there's a, hey, there's a ganker. Hey, there's a known ganker in section C. Well, we have to go to section B. Like this, from the very beginning, this is how they did it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very much, Vlad. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. You know, you know what I'm saying? Everybody checked for them. Experience you. on their first trading run, shipping you goods know? that they had bought with weeks worth of is. Oh no, well, dude. At the time, I naively believed that any security rating above 0.0, .0 would be safe because- Oof. Oof. <laughs> uh, <how> many... <laughs> Do you remember when you thought that? You know? Do you remember when you were like, I'm in high sec. This is how we sounded back then. I was in high sec. I was safe, right? I was safe. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know?
I naively, listen, they know now. I naively believed anything above zero, zero, low sec would be safe. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been said before and it'll be said many times again. You are never safe in here. <laughs> Nobody would be ballsy enough to uh, dare provoke the incredible. wrath of the 5-0 in space. Exactly. I turned uh. out to be wrong. I knew that something was wrong when my ship started to beep and a red target lock cursor appeared in the horizon with the name Deathbringer. Oh, the my man. My man. Somebody rolled a character. It's not even spelled right. De my name is Deathbringer. My name is Deathbringer. And I will destroy the ships in New Eden. Those filthy miners will be no more. <laughs> this is the best. De Death <laughs> this guy was like, listen, I'm going to be a space pirate. And we all have had this. Ex this experience is universal to Eve. When my ship started to beep and our red target lock cursor appeared, and it doesn't say, and a pit formed in my throat as I looked at the ship, at the blinking light of my death. You start seeing, you see your health card, and then, and you're just like, oh no. And you just, you explode. And the first moment you lose a ship, you go, ah, I did. I just, you sit back like, oh my God. You're like, I quit this game. And the next day you're like, I gotta find this guy. I gotta, I gotta stop, you know? And here it is. The Amazing. Accelerated. Love the energy. Thank you, Blizzle. Thank you. Around my ship. Since Amazing. I hadn't even bothered trying to Amazing. fight a training so, pirate yet, Xavier? I yeah, had yeah. no idea see. what the heck was going on. He sent mm. a message to me, 250K or die. I responded to him, okay, the sweat dripping down my armpits oh, past God. my side and accumulating in a little puddle at the edge of my shirt. Five or more seconds must have passed as I fumbled for the micro warp drive hotkey, and just as they started to warm up, the first missile slammed into my ship. The warp gate was 15,000 meters away, I had to be within 800 meters to pass through it, and I was currently flying at about 300 meters per second. A second missile exploded against the hull, bringing down my shields and tearing apart my hull. I knew that if one more missile hit me, my ship would be nothing more than space debris, and this fu- who couldn't even spell death correctly would have access to all I had worked for. Awesome. Come on, you fucking pieces of shit! I shouted at the monitor. My dog started to bark in the background, but I could barely hear it. The only thing that mattered was the gate, because I knew that if I had lost that cargo, all my week's worth of hard work and all my finely tuned bull- it would be down the drain. Wow. Whoosh! I hadn't used the micro warp drives since the night before and forgot about just how powerful they were. Oof. I was now shooting toward the warp gate at three and a half kilometers per second, and all Deathbringer had to account for his two expensive missiles was a trail of dust. Oof. If you're reading this right now, Death, I'd like to give you a hearty f you. <laughs> I Yo, that was that was that that's the kind of stories, okay, that Eve is all about. That's what I'm talking about. The near misses. The, like, pushing your knowledge of the game to the brink. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get ganked and somebody goes, give me money and I won't kill you, don't give them anything. They'll just take your money and still kill you. Okay? That is a tale as old as time. You know, I sometimes have dreams of being caught in no and not being able to dock. Let me let me tell you. Yeah, it's never ran for terrorists. Yeah, exactly. So, AWOX? What is this? What is this? He was linked to me. Ezekiel? What is this? Yo, Kisrael. This is the first Kisrael I've seen. Four billion in this Kisrael, my brother in Christ. You know, ugh. In J space. Oof. Brother. Got wrecked. How's the fit? Guns. Is this my sniper fit? 425. Similar. I like the nanofibers for sure. Going, going fast. Bro, this is a. P See, I don't like nanofibers for PvP because it reduces your armor. You know, and I know, and I know his shields fit chat, but it reduces your overall HP and he's got a damage control. So I don't love the nanofibers. The abyssals are suck. You know, this is not 4 billion. This is more because the abyssals are going to, oh my God, abyssal warp scram too. I see it because the banana tigers are killing their, their selves. Why are they doing this? Why are they killing their own freaking Kisrael's? It looks like he hadn't done a thing. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Real money transaction, y'all. There it is. <laughs> Or the lids of a shield super. I mean, entirely possible. You know how this 
this person can get back their stuff. If they only, you know, use code Loru on the Marquee Dragon store, you get a solid 3% off and then you can get all your things ready to go back. Head on down to the Eve section of the Marquee store. Use code Loru at checkout. Instant delivery, 100% trusted. You'll get all your stuff right back to where you need to get it. Thank you very much. You can even get a skin for your next Kizreel. Hopefully that your friends won't kill. Thank you kindly, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm at the specified Amazing. star base in the Galente region. My ship battered and bruised, and my ego several sizes smaller. Mm -hmm. I sold the computer hardware for a total of 3.7 million credits. The whole repairs amounted to 100 k <laughs> My man is knees deep, knees weak, arms are sweaty. For 4 million isk? <laughs> but back then, chat, back then, I remember when, if I did a level four, I remember when I first got my Dominix and I did my level, my first ever level four, and I got like, and I got like 15 million isk from the payout and another like six from the, uh, uh, you know, selling the items. And then I salvaged it. I went back and I salvaged stuff and you get another like couple hundred K. I, I was like, wow. I've made it, <laughs> you know, like I've, I'm here, baby. You know, so it's incredible, right? Espion. Oh my gosh. Formal isk is like the daily kill five MVC. Exactly. Back then, back then 30 day Plex was around 300 million isk. Wow. 300 million isk for 500 Plex. Nowadays, I think it's 2.5 billion Plex, by the way, hashtag relatable. Absolutely incredible. You know? This is it. When will we get on Eve soon? Inferno soon. We're gonna give. We're gonna give him time. We're gonna give him time. Let's watch another. Let's watch to the end of section two, and then we'll get back I, on Eve. Okay. Sure, I sure, felt sure. my heart with my left oh. hand. It was still pulsing rapidly, and the mm. realization that I had netted six hundred thousand credits in twenty-five minutes, along with a healthy dose of action, sent it oh. shooting up even further. I did several more trade routes that morning, and by nine a.m., my credit count read five million seven hundred eighty thousand credits. Six million esque. End quote. Rich. No matter what Rolling tricks the were deep. discovered, however, piracy remained a lucrative trade due to Is the heavy the traffic in the mega? lanes used to haul ore. Because Sick. of the distances involved in transporting ore from Nullsec to Empire Space and mm -hmm. little safe way to store it during the process, a mining operation would often consist of one mining ship to pull the ore from the asteroids and five or more transport ships to haul it back to Empire Space, Wow! all of which were easy targets. Soon, piracy was lucrative enough for the first pirate gangs to lay claim to territory in Nullsec. Sec. Escalation. Various See, it's why this game is so great. Escalation. The miners and the traders are doing their thing. Pirates come in. The miners and the traders group up and get more efficient with their stuff. The pirates start grouping up. The pirates form bonds, friendship. The pirates make corpse. They go after them in a in a absolute singular minded effort. The miners and the traders then have to corp up, get protection, pay mercenary corps that start forming, right? And this is the friendship machine that Eve makes. It's it's something that world, I, I'm gonna keep talking about WoW chat because I love the game and I've this absolutely gone to the birds recently. WoW introducing the random group ups where you can just, I wanna queue for this dungeon, click. It means there's no community. You're basically playing an MMO by yourself. Or you're, I can LFR, I can look for raid and be random people that I'll never see again because it's so big. But in Eve, you can find the fleet up mechanics, but you have to, you'll know people, you'll see them again. You can leave notes for them like, hey, last seen this, this month. This is absolutely the only game nowadays that still does this kind of stuff. And it's amazing. So, they moved into the most valuable star system, do that. seeking flighty mining and transport ships. Mm -hmm. On occasion, groups of pirates would find trade routes frequented by the more economy-minded players and perform one of the most feared and most obnoxious practices to those in Empire space, a gate camp. Essential for transit between systems, Stargates yep. also acted as choke points for players to exploit, as there only ever is one wow. linking two systems together. And so, pirates would often wait at these combined ingress and egress points in low security space, waiting for unsuspecting players to appear and destroying their ship, sometimes before they could even load the new system. Yep. Eventually, CCP were forced <sighs> to add auto turrets onto Stargates to prevent routes from being blockaded for long Wow, it got so bad. Think about that. Like, this is what I'm talking about, about how there has to be a kind of minimum that the devs provide from an experience standpoint, where it got so bad from a trader miner standpoint that the devs had to add in the guns on the Stargates. Okay, 
that they had to do something about it because it got so bad. It got so bad, dude. That they, like, I could just see the CCP devs going like, so there's like no mining getting done in this section because these nerds have like 20 paladins and they're just sitting on the gate. What do we do? Yeah, what if we just add guns that'll shoot them if they do stupid stuff? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know what I'm saying? Stretches of time. They do nothing now, the Xavier. Following the release of Back the game, in the day? CCP mm. was also able to address the issue of those who had bought factories for resale day one, by day a camp. relatively simple mm. method. In order to keep a factory, the player holding it would be forced to pay a regular maintenance fee for it, relative to the amount of money that could potentially be made from its output. So the factories were the first, like, player-owned structures. Is that, is that fair to say? You know in what I'm essence, saying? Oh. a land value tax. Mm. Just as in the real world, this made the factories a significant financial burden to speculators who weren't using them, leveraging the speculators to either begin producing ships or sell the factories to someone right. who would. Play the in game or else. order, the factories were serving their intended purpose. The game hadn't even been live for three months, and already CCP was being forced to adjust their game to contend with the space game enthusiasts, wow. notorious for exploiting any system that they could as a part of their fun, while simultaneously attempting to complete the systems that they had intended for the game. And these new systems promised to create even more unforeseen and perhaps unmanageable problems. Wowzer. Y'all, that's, that's amazing. Three months, what we just heard, was three months into the game. Yo, this is one of my favorite ships, the uh, Redeemer, whatever it is. They just, I love those. I love those so things. Factories are the pastas. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, see, people give CCP a lot of crap because they sold their company to whatever the Tennyson's, whatever the heck. I don't remember who owns them. I think it's Tennyson. And it went downhill. I, I don't think Eve... We're looking at the beginnings of Eve right now, and we're seeing the intent, and we're seeing what they're trying to do but at the end of the day, Eve is still a business. So when we get to the part where inevitably they're going to talk about them selling the company and inevitably they're going to talk about the real money transactions and all and all those kind of things. Pearl Abyss, that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to talk about that. The short of it is this is a company and they have to find the balance between staying afloat and providing an experience. You can't provide the experience if you're out of business. So if the game has to milk their player base a little bit for a time, we can give feedback and then hopefully they continue to make it better. Ladies and gentlemen, I, as of this video, this year, 2023, in my opinion, has been the single greatest year for EVE Online in the history of EVE Online. Maybe when Wormholes came out, it was better in terms of like the amount of content added. I still think now, because there's still Wormholes in the game, and Faction Warfare has gotten two massive updates this year. And we've got, this year has been so incredible for the new ships, new content types, how there's been tweaks to things, balancing updates that actually made sense. The game is, in my opinion, very healthy. And, and with Vanguard coming out, that's the silver bullet, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Exactly, RZ. Vanguard alone got me hyped. Vanguard is something no other gaming studio is doing what CCP is doing with the relation between EVE Online and Vanguard. That is going to be incredible, y'all. Now, Midnight Society, those that know, know, okay. They're making, that's Dr. Dis Disrespect Studio, everybody freaking knows, right? They're making Dead Drop. It's an extraction shooter. Tarkov's got an extraction shooter. Hell, there's a, you know, even Dark and Darker is an extraction shooter fantasy game, right? Whatever. So, De uh, EVE Vanguard is nothing new in terms of gameplay. What is interesting and new is the fact that it's directly connected to EVE Online. So just like we saw in three months, three months, we saw trade routes getting established, pirate blocks getting put up, um, literal blockades. Like, <laughs> what's the, I have to listen to, I have to go see the episode one Star Wars thing again so I can like mimic the voice, but like, we, are, we will not, we must stop this blockade. I have to like remember it because I can't watch it now because I'll get demonetized, sheesh. But like all this happened in three months. Can you imagine what's gonna happen now when Vanguard comes out in three months? The Trades Federation, exactly. Ridiculous. E Vanguard's gonna be amazing. You know, you know, sheesh. Wasn't something like this already published seven, six years ago, a shooter that accompanied Eve. Eve had dust, but dust went 
the what dust got uh destroyed. Dust is not a thing anymore. We don't we don't speak of it. You know, what's up, Necrosis? What's up, Excuse me. You're you're right, Blissful though. Recently got back into even really loving it so far. Your vid's been helpful a ton. Keep it up. Thank you very much, Necrosis. I really appreciate that. Seriously. Absolutely makes my day. Whenever y'all tell me these things. Really, really. Is Vanguard bringing the carbon and destiny engine updates? I don't know, Orthodox. It's a great question. Did I get my old Dust 14 514 name back? I haven't yet. I haven't gotten the email yet. We'll see. We'll see if I get it, you know what I'm saying? Most content added this year pushes people towards low sec. Meanwhile, Lancers are the bane of Jump Freighter logistics, says I4. What's up, I4? Yeah, it's good to see you. I agree with you. We're getting pushed towards low sec. That's where the content starts, though. You know? Absolutely. Where high sec, as a Care Bear, mostly myself, high sec is one of those places that it's not good to stay there forever because it doesn't help the friendship machine that we heard Helmar talk about in the video, you know? So, y'all, we're gonna watch more of this video. So if you wanna stay tuned for that, definitely ch sub to the YouTube channel, like right here. We're gonna check out more of this video. We're gonna have more of this coming, so make sure you check more of this out so we can get the good nostalgia coming in. We'll see y'all soon. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Okay. <laughs>